Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 22nd of October. Now, there's a rumour going round that scientists in Boston in the United States have made a new sars coronavirus 2 and instead of killing essentially 0% of the mice it infects, it kills 80% of the mice it infects. Could this rumour possibly be true? Uh, I'm afraid to tell you and it distresses me to tell you that it is completely true. I find this unbelievable, outrageous arrogance, uh, but we'll take a look at it and unpick it, and we will be looking at the scientific paper, of course. Now, this is the paper here. It's actually in the form of a preprint at the moment, but given that it's preprinted, uh, it probably will be peer reviewed shortly. Uh, but of course, this does mean that the research took place. It's unlikely that they're uh, lying about this research taking place. So, this is actually happening. Now, this is the most incredible, in my view, gain of function research. We've gone from killing none of the mice to killing 80% of the mice. Now, OK, it might not be as that bad if it escaped into people. It might only kill 40% uh, of the people that infects or 4% 4 of the people it infects. We don't know. But playing with this sort of virus, to me, is just unbelievable. So let's, let's have a look at it. And um, you make your own mind up. Don't let me prejudice you too much. Now, this is Enhanced Potential Pandemic Pathogen Research. So they're looking at these research. It's a SARS coronavirus 2. So what they've essentially done here is we, we all know about the, uh, the SARS coronavirus 2 here. And it's got these uh, spike proteins on it, hasn't it, like that? I think we know this uh, well, well now. So what they've done actually here is they've taken one of the original Wuhan type viruses, which is a different type of virus, and essentially they've taken the spike proteins off that, off the original Wuhan type virus, and they've put on some of the new uh, Omicron uh, type uh, spike proteins. And they find out this combination has made it 80%, uh, basically 80% more deadly to mice. So what this means is it's not just the spike protein that make the virus deadly, it's also the, uh, the genetics and the proteins in the rest of the virus that make it deadly. It's that combination. So that's quite an interesting scientific finding. Uh, not too surprising. But basically the, what they've done is they've mixed up two viruses and come up with this new one that has a massively higher function. It's gain of, this is surely gain-of-function research that we've been so worried about. Now, what do other people think about it? Professor uh, Shapira, lead scientist Israeli government. Uh, this should be totally forbidden. It's playing with fire. I agree 100%. Dr Richard uh, Edbright, um, New Brunswick. Um, the research is a clear example of gain-of-function research, so good to see the uh, doctor here agrees. Uh, if we're able to avoid a next lab-generated pandemic, this is pretty serious talk. Uh, a la another lab-generated pandemic, assuming we've had one to begin with, really quite serious talk. It's imperative that oversight of enhanced potential pandemic pathogen research be strengthened. Now, this is in the United States of America we're talking about here. I am taken aback, really quite taken aback that uh, they've allowed this. It's imperative that officials in the United States government agencies who repeatedly have placed the public at risk by repeatedly violating the existing policies be held accountable. So pretty strong words there. Um, what is going on with the regulation in the United States? Professor David Livermore uh, from uh, University of East Anglia in England, of course, uh, Given the strong likelihood that the COVID pandemic originated from an escape in a laboratory manipulated virus in Wuhan, okay, could well have done, uh, could well have done, these experiments seem profoundly unwise. English understatement. But when an Englishman, I don't know if his English is British anyway, I think, uh, use the word profoundly, uh, that really does mean profoundly. This is strong wording. Now, this <coughs> research seems to have been carried out in Boston University National uh, Emerging Infectious Disease Laboratory, one of 13 level four labs in the US. So think of one of these labs with people in sort of <coughs> people in sort of space suits, things with breathing pipes and all that, all that kind of thing. Um, but it may not be 100 percent secure. Now, this is the paper here. Role of the spike pathogen uh, and... Uh, Antigenic behaviour, so basically antigen is the virus, and this is, this is on the, in the BA1 that they looked at here. 
Um, okay, it's a few months ago now, it's moved on, but it was just published last week. Boston University School of Medicine and other places. I'm not picking them out as the only one. But the, the work does seem to have been done in this Boston University's National uh, Emerging Diseases uh, Lab. That seems to be where the work was carried out, as far as I can gather. Now, um, predominant uh, SARS coronavirus 2 Omicron variant is highly transmissible. Of course, we know this. Uh, even evades, uh, even in fully vaccinated individuals, and causes attenuated disease. So the disease, in other words, the disease is not as bad. So what they wanted to find out was, uh, okay, the uh, Omicron's BA1 in this example caused less severe disease. Why is that? Because we know the spike proteins change. So is it because of the change in the spike protein that's less severe disease? But when they combined it with the original Wuhan variant, they found that it caused more severe disease. So it's looking like it's not so much the spike protein that's causing more severe disease, it's the other part of the virus. So the reason that um, fatalities, for example, were more extreme in the early part of the pandemic, there was a high number of people died, was probably because of the core of the virus rather than necessarily because of these uh, spike proteins of the virus. That's what they wanted to find out, and they did find that out. But uh, at what risk is the question? Um, Compared with other major vi vi viral variants recognized to date, fine. The Omicron spike protein usually has a large number of mutations, uh, is considered the major driver of these phenotypes. The phenotype just means the way that the virus behaves in the real world. It's the outward expression of the, the genetic material of the virus. So uh, they said we, gener we generated a, a chimeric recombination SARS coronavirus 2. And that's what they did. They, they took the original Wuhan type virus, the genetics from that, that made the core of the virus. They took the uh, genetic material from the Omicron that generated the spike protein and they recombined these into a brand new virus. Now, as far as I can understand, this would never have occurred in nature. So they generated this completely new virus. Right. Now let's look at what a chimera is. So a chimera just means a mix, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's two animals mixed, so like a, a man with a lion's head or, or, or a, a horse with wings. With, you know, That would be a chimeric uh, situation where you've got two organisms mixed up. But in this case, it's a, um, a chimera or chimeric virus, one that contains genetic material derived from two or more distinct viruses. In this case, the original Wuhan virus, and the SARS uh, coronavirus. So the original SARS coronavirus uh, from Wuhan, SARS-CoV-2 from Wuhan and SARS-CoV-2, but the one that's a long time later now, the, the Omicron BA1. So they've combined these two um, in a way that really wouldn't have occurred in nature as far as I can see at all. Now the US Center for Veterinary uh, Bio Biology from the United States Department of Agriculture gives this definition of a chimera. A new hybrid microorganism created by joining nucleic acid, in this case the RNA of course from these two viruses, fragments from two or more different microorganisms, in this case the original Wuhan virus and the BA1 Omicron virus, artificially though in the lab, uh, in which at least two of the fragments contain essential genes necessary for replication. R-E-P-L-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. This virus can replicate potentially, indefinitely, potentially, if it escaped, to form a new pandemic, potentially killing 80% of mice that it infects. And as we'll see, these mice were humanized. Uh, we'll look at that in a minute. But th th this virus could kill potentially... 40, 50, 60, 70 percent of the people that infects and yet they seem to be doing research on this virus. I, I, I'm, I'm really concerned. This is an existential threat. I, as far, existential to me means to do with existence. So if I caught this, my, I might probably, if I caught this virus that they're working with in this lab, some might say playing with in this lab, um, it's an existential threat to my existence. I, I might no longer exist if I got that. And that concerns me. We could be looking at uh, mortality rates which are uh, well I don't even want to think about it um, give, given that the original Wuhan virus and the the BA1 the uh, Omicron BA1 virus killed essentially no mice and this kills 80% of mice 
And of course, we are vertebrates, the same as mice. It just, just doesn't bear thinking about how, how would they have the arrogance to do this? Right, back to the paper, we regenerated chimeric recombination of SARS coronavirus 2, <clears throat> including the S gene of the Omicron, spike gene of the Omicron in the backbone of the ancestral SARS coronavirus 2 isolate. So there you go, uh, spike protein from the spike proteins from the uh, Omicron and the original body, if you like, from the original Wuhan virus. This new rejiggled recombination. I compared this virus with the natural circulating Omicron variant. The Omicron, bear, the, the Omicron S bearing uh, virus robustly escaped vaccine induced humoral immunity. So this new virus have generated um, showed great immune escape. People that were immune to previous SARS coronavirus 2 or the mice anyway didn't have any, any immunity to this. So this escaped, not only could it kill huge numbers of people potentially, would also have no immunity to it or essentially no immunity to it or very limited immunity to it because it shows robust uh, escape uh, a robust escape from vaccine induced immunity so um it would be like a brand new almost like a brand new pandemic we would have no immunity mainly due to mutations of the receptor binding motif what we call we tend to call this the rbd don't we the receptor binding domain which is the part on on the on the SARS coronavirus two the bit here that actually binds into, in, that actually binds into the ACE receptor, as we've looked at many times. Yet, unlike naturally occurring Omicron, efficiently replicates in the cell lines and primary primary like distal lung cells. Now, what 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 this the, these cell lines here? What what you have to do? Of course, viruses can't reproduce on their own. They can only reproduce inside cells. So what they've done is they've taken some cells and these cells are like the uh, the distal lung cells. So the proximal lung cells, if you look at a lung, so we've got the main the main trachea there and the bronchial passages or the trachea, as you'd say in the States. And here, here here's the lungs here. So um, this is, of course, what we are familiar with from anatomy. Now, the um, the proximal tissues would be the ones up here near the mouth that they're proximal tissues the distal tissues would be the ones down here in the lungs right down here and of course as you probably know what happens is the the airways get smaller and smaller branching to smaller and smaller airways until they get to the alveoli the air sacs where the gaseous exchange takes place the oxygen goes uh, from there to there and the carbon dioxide goes from the blood into the um, into the lungs so the distal cells are like the cells you would get here in the distal part of the airway. Th these would all be distal airway cells. And of course, these are the ones we're particularly worried about because if we get inflammation in here, this can fill up with fluid and we get the uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome that killed so many people at the start of the pandemic. Not what we want. So they were trying these distal cells to see how it worked in these distal cells. And uh, that's what they did. Now, they were using KH... HAC2 mice, angi angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor 2 mice. Now, what this is, now I don't like this research either particularly, but I don't pretend to be an expert in it. But what they've done here is they've taken some genes from a human, say me for example, and they've taken the genes from me that code for my uh, ACE2 receptors, that make my ACE2 receptors, and they've put the genes from a human into a mouse. So that it's still a mouse, but it makes human molecular architecture type ACE2 receptors. So the ACE2 receptors in the transgenic humanized mouse are basically chemically the same as mine. So we they can model them. And and these new virus that they uh, this new virus that they made latched onto those in the mice and killed 80% of the mice. Therefore it's reasonable to assume that this new virus that they created would latch onto my distal ACE2 receptors as well, causing severe inflammation just as it did in the unfortunate 80% of the mice that it killed. Um, so transgenic mice, um, they, they express the human ACE2, angiotensin 2 receptor that the virus binds onto, including airway epithelia where infection typically begins, as we know, the, the lining tissues of the airways. Uh, because they're susceptible to SARS-CoV-2 virus, they are useful as an experimental model, basically. So it's mice... This is, we're talking about mice with human 
ACE2 receptors. That's how they know uh, that this uh, would work in human cells because it's the same as it's the same as the, uh, the the ACE2 receptors that are expressed by the mice are the same as in me because it's made by the same human gene, transgenic humanized mice. So that's what that means. That's what this line is. Uh, Omicron cases were mild, non uh, were mild, non fatal infections. Good in the mice. The Omicron S carrying virus, the new one, that jiggled around with what you might call the Frankenstein virus inflicts severe disease with a mortality rate of 80%. Now 80%, um, that's one more than 79%. This is massive. Just imagine if this virus escaped and it killed, worst case scenario, perhaps 80% of people, suppose it only killed 8% of people, it would spread rapidly we don't have immunity to it. They've already said it has huge immune escape. The vaccine induced immunity would not work against this new virus. The, the natural induced immunity might work a bit better, but I don't particularly want to find out. Um, th this is just, I find this terrifying, to be quite honest. Um, kills 80% of these humanized mice. This indicates that while the the vaccine escape uh, of Omicron is defined by the mutation in the spike, the major determinant of viral pathogenicity right outside of the spike protein. So the reason that Omicron is, it's, it's interesting to be fair, the reason that Omicron is killing less people, is less pathogenic, might not be related to changes in the spike protein that we've been monitoring and while, while, while we've been spending all our time looking at the spike protein, we've taken our eye off the ball for the other components of the virus. And it seems to be changes in the other components of the virus, the envelope and the, 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 the nuclear capsid protein and the RNA and things like that. It might be changes in those which makes the virus more or less pathogenic. And because they've changed, um, the Omicron variant is less pathogenic. So it's interesting. But um, the risk to find out that piece of knowledge is to me just too immense um let's give the final word to uh, mary shelley who of course wrote frankenstein um first published in 1818 this book of course is about the about the uh the risk of human arrogance that human beings in all their cleverness cleverness in inverted commas can make a monster which they can no longer control. It's a terrifying idea. And it's the reason why Mary Shelley's Frankenstein has been a bestseller for well over 200 years now, because it gets to the heart of something. And uh, let's just look at one of the quotes. This is from the 1831 edition. Frightful, it must, frightful must it be, for supremely frightful would be the effect of any human endeavour to mock the stupendous mechanisms of the creator of the world. How dare we think we can copy the creator? We are mocking the situation. It may well be that we've just had a pandemic because of this human arrogance. We'll probably never know for sure. Um, and this research in Boston has got the risk um, of it um, causing another one if it were to escape. I strongly suspect the security in Boston is way, way, way better than security in um, in Wuhan. But personally, I don't want to risk my life and the, right, the, li the lives of my family and the lives of you watching just so uh, we can write a few academic papers. I therefore call on the American government to close this research down immediately. Immediately hygienically destroy all these Frankenstein viruses and if the viruses don't exist then they won't escape thank you for watching